My colleague Rahul Kamal caught up with Rishad Premji, the executive chairman of Wipro, and spoke about the outlook for the IT sector amidst all the global uncertainties and also about what the new normal will be for the work culture in a post-pandemic environment. Let's take a quick listen in to that exclusive conversation. So one of the biggest beneficiaries of what's happened during the pandemic has been the IT sector. As the world attempts to bounce back after the pandemic, uh, what are the kind of meta trends that you're seeing play themselves out, uh, particularly in the IT sector? No, look, uh, you know, COVID has been unfairly kind to the technology industry, right? I think what COVID has done has forever changed the mindset of organizations across the world in terms of how they think about their digital journeys, how they leverage technology to engage more impactfully and smartly with their customers, right? Because and that's, that was always something that was moving. It has just accelerated dramatically through COVID. And so these journeys of how do we move to the cloud, more fast? How do we leverage data and artificial intelligence more impactfully to drive hyper-personalization and segmentation so you can offer customers things that they actually want and need? How do you leverage uh, security? How do you, how do you make your environment more secure? And how do you leverage talent that is available in countries like India smartly to drive this journey? And I think that only accelerates with COVID. And, uh, you know, despite everything that's happening in the world, and we can talk a little bit more about, more about that, I think that continues for the foreseeable future. So how has the Ukraine-Russia war impacted what you're doing? Because there's been a lot of talk of geopolitical tensions impacting the way the global economy is configured. How is it playing out? So there are multiple different elements. You know, certainly the Ukraine war is one component. COVID, the reality is it's not over yet. There's rising commodity prices, there's inflation, there's a lot of uncertainty. So it's quite interesting when you are here in Davos and talking to people, people are incredibly worried about the environment. They're also uncertain about how the environment unfolds over the next 6, 10, 12 months. At the same time, people are still investing. Demand is still quite buoyant. And you talk to a whole bunch of people, from the consultants to the private equity folks to customers, there's a sense of optimism in terms of spend still continuing, even though people are cautious. So I see the environment still staying quite robust and quite, uh, uh, you know, positive for the foreseeable the, the future. The one thing that's so often spoken about whenever the IT sector is in the news is the great resignation. Uh, how has it played out for you? What have you been doing to try and keep the young workforce that you have uh, completely plugged in and not joining the Great Resignation. Yeah. You know, it's very interesting. One of the big things that's happened is we have about 45% of people who joined us in the last 25 years, 24 months, right? 45% of people who haven't walked into a Wipro office, uh, who've engaged with their managers and a couple of people around them. And so they've built no sense of connect with the organization. So we can talk about hybrid work model as well because we're quite keen that people come back at least some of the time to drive this osmosis, to drive that engagement. But we've been trying to find innovative ways of connecting with people. How do we connect with them informally through a transactional medium like, like video? But there's no replacement to coming back and connecting in person. Uh, the reality has also been there's been inordinate demand and finite supply. And that also creates huge optionality and also creates a huge amount of churn. And we've been working hard to drive down that churn over the, the last couple of years. In fact, one of the things we've done today is we've significantly increased our fresher hiring. So we hired about 10,000 people in 21, 20,000 people last year. We'll hire 40,000 people this year. And we're giving them a roadmap. So we're telling them when you join us today in your offer letter, if you do X, Y, and Z, if you grow and if you perform at these levels, you can be at a compensation of X in year five, and you can be doing these kinds of roles in year five. So we're also trying to provide some sort of stability and visibility to people to also sort of make that a draw because oftentimes we lose people in that year two, year three, year four time frame. So how difficult has it been to get people to come back to work because many went back to their hometowns, got used to working in their pajamas. Uh, you're here all suited, booted, you wear a tie yeah. as well, but is it really difficult to get them back and what kind of hybrid models are you looking at? No, now? it is, you know, the reality is still a large chunk of people are working from their hometowns. People have gone back, they are living with their parents, they're eating good home cooked food, they're spending less, they're saving more. Uh, and so it is going to be tough, you know. I'm a big believer, Rahul, that we have to go into, move into some sort of a hybrid model. We would like all of our people to come into the office some of the time. We've just opened up our offices in April, three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We made it optional for people to come back at the moment. We, we are gently nudging them to come back. But I'm a deep, big believer that we must, must come back in person for two reasons. One is for culture. As I was mentioning, 45% of our people haven't walked into an office. You, culture grows when people gossip 
over coffee, gossip over lunch, you know, connect with their colleagues, discover the smell of the office, the smell of the place. Incredibly, incredibly important for culture growth. And for us, we're very proud of our culture. It's one of our core defining propositions of who we are as an organization. The other is for ideas and innovation, because ideas and innovation don't happen in linear form. They happen when people are sitting together in a conference room and people are frustrated, but suddenly something strikes. And I think for both those reasons, it's incredibly important people come back. So we are going to be on this journey. But there's a disconnect between the way that you see it in terms of wanting to bring people back because of the cultural issues and the way a lot of young techies see it. Say, hey, Vishal, if I can do the same job sitting back home, yeah. why do you need me? Judge yeah. me by what I deliver. Yeah. And if I'm doing well, uh, why can't I keep staying at home? And if you don't like me, I'm off. Yeah, but I think there's also a, a bunch of people, Rahul, that want to come back. Sure. They want to have a sense of connectedness. They want to have a social equation in the office, right? That want to build a sense of community around them as well. So that's equally important to people. And we'll have to strike the right balance.